Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to another episode of the God Concept. I'm your host, Mr. Pagan. How's everybody doing today? Uh, today is not an episode where I'm going to be speaking, you know, uh, so intel- intelligently about things, you know what I mean? I get tongue twisted at times. Today I want to speak about the status quo, the system in place that we're living in. You know, not just as men, but as women as well. You know, we are all here together. The thing is, we're here in this incubator, having babies with each other for reasons that we don't know, right? And then, the system that we're in punishes us, us for having children. They do it through the women sometimes, they do it, do it through the system sometimes, they do it in many different ways. Sometimes, women get it done to them through the system and through men. You know, some, some women can't find a good man, right? Then you got some men who can't find a good woman. Now they have these kids together, you know, these people who really didn't know each other have these kids together. And now the government is coming after one of you. And it's by design. It's by design. I repeat, it's by design. If you're, if you're taking care of your children, If you're trying to build something, if you're building a legacy, that's what matters. There should not be an institution in between you and your child's relationship, you and your wife, or you and your husband's relationship. There should be no institution there. So we're not talking about just child support. We're actually talking about the whole system of marriage. Because they they set you up in a way where they pair you with people that you're not even supposed to be paired with. And we do it to ourselves. And we cause ourselves financial burdens and financial stress. And we call out cause ourselves, you know, systematic stress, because this is the system we're dealing with. All the system shit is, is what's bringing you stress, right? It's not the children, right? It's the system. It's the system that's playing about in your mind, in her mind, even in the child's mind, and in the city. They prey on you. They prey on you every day to steal your financial security, to steal your, your, your pride in yourself, your, your, your self, you know, security. And they use these women and they use some of these men to do it. You know what I mean? Um, I've been recently going through a lot of things with uh, an estranged, you know, wife and, you know, my kids and everything. I love them to death. Still love them no matter what I go through. And I do what I can in the light of what I'm going through now. I even sent letters on my behalf to different places talking about um, the tactics that I forgot this company, but they're um, from Family Court or whatever. But they're the tactical unit, Family Court tactical unit. And um, they sent letters and things like this. So I went down to the building. Right. I went in the building, went upstairs. They treat you nice. It's all women. They treat you beautifully when you go in there. And then you go in the back and see this little lady where she's sitting behind this desk that's shaped like a fuck your finger, right? And she sit up there and she's basically, once you step in that office, you've lost all rights. You understand that? Once you step in these people's office, you've lost all rights. She basically told me that she's going to do what the fuck she want to do with my bank account, with my whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, she had me in du- under duress, basically. I was under duress because she said, if I do this, she's got me. If I do this, she's got me. Either fucking way. Like, basically saying she's going to take everything that I got, no matter what the fuck I do or what the fuck I say. I'm saying, even if I'm, even if I'm paying or whatever, even if I'm, you know, even if it's coming out, yeah, they're still going to freeze accounts and all the type of shit. That's what they do. So, when she said that, when she talked about freezing assets and uh, locking accounts and taking funds, which basically thievery, she was basically, this little lady, 
I was at the child support office upstairs. She basically was strong arming me. That's what these women, like, I'm not women, like, I'm not trying to downplay women or nothing like that. But when you go to that office and you go in that, you know, when you go into that building and you go to that office, basically what they're doing is strong arming you. And you can't say shit about it. That's why you going in, you going into one office through two different doors. That's what they do. It's a psychological thing. You're going to one office, but she goes through one door and you go through another door. And then when you get in there, you you understand why. Because this big ass desk in there shaped like a fuck you finger because she's about to fuck you. Financially fuck you. And, you know, physically fuck you too because she could have a cop come to the door, throw you throw you in jail, lock you up or whatever. All I can say after, after I went through the whole experience, all I can say to the lady was, I just want to go home. I swear because I'm, I'm not... I can't deal with things on a systematic level, like with the government, with dealing with all this shit. I'm not even going to lie. Through everything I've been through, I'm not dealing with the system no more. I don't deal with cops. I don't deal with, I don't deal with uh, 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 the system in any type of way. I don't deal with the banking institutions no more. I'm not dealing with cops no more. I'm not dealing with, um, 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 um financial institutes no more. I mean, I will. The ones that personally support me. Do you know I had Bank of America for over 15 years, right? And was never able to get a loan for a property, a house, or anything. And I, I had Bank of America for, for 20 years, probably. And never was able to get a personal loan from them for a house or any type of business. Even when I tried to establish credit cards through Bank of America, they made me get a prepaid credit card where I paid into it. And then once that time period was up, guess what? They still never gave me a fucking credit card. And they were supposed to give me back my money that I put into the credit card and then have a line of credit built on Bank of America. Never did it. That's just another example how the system fucks you over. That's what they do. That's why if, if I can, I'm not going to lie. I don't fuck people over. If I can, yeah, I get over on the system at times because they deserve it. And the system get over on you all the time, every day, in ways that you don't even know that they get over on you. They get over on you. And it's fucked up because a lot of people in our lives don't know that. So that allows the system to work on you through them. Because either they work for the system or they believe in the system. Oh, God forbid they have faith in the system. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those are people you got to worry about. Those are the Agent Smiths. And they all out here. They all out here. We sleep in a bed with Agent Smiths. We love Agent Smiths. We see these people every day and we befriend Agent Smith as people. When all they're doing is working for this government, this system that we was placed into, that was placed on us. You know what I mean? And and it's evident. And that's why I I uh, I withdraw from the banking institutions, from any of these courtrooms and shit like that. I'm not going nobody courtrooms and shit like that. I'm not going no none of that shit. I'm not I'm done with all that shit. Seriously, on a different level, I'm done with all that shit. Because I see what this life is about. And I know that there's people who live life and they don't have to live like this, right? The only reason I'm in this position because I wasn't fortunate enough to be taught a better way of living or, 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 or even common sense as a child coming up. You don't learn these things. You don't see these things because you never dealt with it. Or you might not have a man in your life to teach you about these things because they've been through it. But I'm a quick learner. I, 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 pick, I pick up on things and I see that it's a racket. All of it. The marriage system is a racket. The tax system is a racket. The child support system is a racket. PPA is a racket. Parking authority is a racket. The fucking, you know, <laughs> law enforcement is a racket. I mean, even though it's a good racket, it's there for a reason. But when they arrest the innocent people, that the system deems to be criminals. 
for reasons that that's out of their control. This is what they do. It's entrapment. It's exploitation at its best. This is what they do. They exploit you every day. They entrap you every day. You know what I mean? Every single day that we're here, we're going through this. And I hate to say it, one of the best ways they do it is through our children. You know what I mean? Because for your children, you'll go to hell and back. You'll go through hell and back. For your children, you'll you'll give up on your dreams and you'll just take a mediocre job, you know, mediocrity. For your children, you'll, you'll, you'll stay with a woman who you know's been disloyal, dishonest, disfaithful, that cheats on you and shit like that, that talks to you bad, that treats you bad, you know, for the children, you'll go out there and spend the money that, that, that you gain by, by trading your energy for, for, for tangible money or whatever, because that's what you're doing. You're trading your time, your energy for this money. And you'll go out there and you'll trade all that time and energy, whether you was doing something good or bad to get it. And spend it on your children, right? Or give it to your children, right? Or for your children, you'll take all this knowledge that you required and you'll put it in a book like I did. Or you'll talk to them, you know, and let them know that life, what life is really about, like I do. For our children. For our children, we'll suffer. For our children, we'll go through all this shit. That's why we do it. You know what I mean? Even though we know it's not right. We know it's not right, the shit that we go through as a man, as some women, some women and men know that a lot of the shit they go through on a daily basis just ain't right. But we go through it anyway because we got to do what? We got to be there for our kids, right? So what? when you decide to actually stop participating in the rat race and build a legacy for your children, now you're demonized. Now you're demonized because you're not there all the time. Now you're demonized because you're, you're striving for something greater. So it looks like your presence isn't there. But, but what you're actually doing is you're showing and proving. You know, you're leading by example. You know, if you want your children to do great things in life, you have to do great things in life. If you want them to, to be able to do better, you have to do better. If you want them to see better, you have to see better. If you want them to think better, live better, all of that shit, you have to do it first. Otherwise, your children are going to be susceptible to the same circumstances that you were susceptible to, to the same conditions that you were susceptible to. If you want to break the cycle, you have to really break the cycle. I was raised without a father in my life, so I didn't want my kids to be raised without a father. So I married the woman. Who was going to have my kids? Right? But it was counterproductive because this woman wouldn't stay with me for the rest of my life. Or wouldn't, wouldn't have it in her to stay with me and my kids. To be a faithful woman. So I got the short end of the stick. Even though my heart, my soul, my mind was in the right place. All my intentions were in the right place. At one point in time, her intentions were probably in the right place. But once again, the system, the people around, the, everything, they get in your mind. And some people's minds are weaker than others. You know? And that's all it takes. And to be honest with you, this world is designed for us to, you know, to, 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 to procreate. You know what I mean? To, to create out of our physical, out of our mental, out of our, you know, out of our spiritual, right? But it's a caveat to that because if you attach yourself to somebody who don't understand that, then they'll fuck up what you have going on so you could transcend to a higher level of life. And that's what most of us do. Most of, our, most of us don't understand. They see us as just black, white, Native American. Or whatever the fuck it is, Hispanic. But we're not just that. We're different beings from different places. You know, you got empaths. You got, you got, um, what's the empaths? You got, you got uh, 
people with different abilities. You got diff- people with different talents, different abilities, and different spiritual callings. You can't attach yourself to a person that don't have the same spiritual calling as you. You can't attach yourself to a person who's not your soulmate. You can't do it. You can have children with all these people, but the minute you try to marry somebody that you're not intended to be with, this is man playing God again. You're doomed. Because you decided to take, to take you know, uh, uh, you know, a union with somebody that's not even meant for you. And the city laughs. Because believe it or not, they got they got records on everybody. They know who exactly who you are, your characteristics, how old you are, what health problems you have, what what health benefits do you have? What are you good at? What are your attributes? What do you they know all this shit about you, your, your GPU level and shit like that. So they can send people in your life and they know what woman is is right for you. They know exactly when you get married, they can look at the two the two people and say, oh yeah, this relationship is gonna work. They're evenly yoked. <laughs> They're evenly yoked. They complement each other. So this will work. But us, with the lustfulness, with the hormones, you know what I mean? Wanting to bust that fucking nut, we go out there and find a woman that's not even meant for us. That's not really the person that we were meant to be and have babies and all that shit. And they already know it's not working. They already know it's not working because they know her and they know you. Like, damn, these two characters, they not going to work together. And y'all might not believe it because y'all don't see it behind the scenes. But in these big ass buildings downtown and shit like that, they run analytics on the population. They run analytics on the, 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 the social, what's going on in the social media. In society itself, they run analytics on public, on society, on your marriage, on your household. Why do you think sometimes when you say certain shit or thinking about certain shit, it pop up on your phone or on your TV or on the radio or on your watch? Right? That's because it's all analytics and they got us all trapped here. And it's, it's like you can't see it until you see it. And once you see it is you can't unsee that shit. Once you know, you can't unknow. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and that's where I'm at. That's, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm seeing all this and I'm discovering all this stuff. And it's been like that for a while. And it's kind of, it, 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 it stifles your creative abilities because you know what's going on, but you still got to play the game. I know exactly what's going on, but they still want me to play this game. They, they make it seem as if I got to still play this game when I know I don't. I know I don't got to play this game, but they, but they want you to believe so to the point where, you know, it, it's to the point where they'll throw you in jail. They'll do all types of shit to your life just for you to believe in what they put in place. And it's easy to believe in a system that has been put in place. When they can physically do things to you. See, if a, if, a, if a fictitious system that's in place can do uh, real, real shit to your life, real things in your life, then that system is no longer fictitious. It's real because they've made it real. They've showed you that they could do these things to you. But I also know that they're not supposed to be able to do those things. They, they, they really can't do those things because that's really infringing on your life, your liberty, and your freedom. But what freedom do you really have when you're born into a system of slaves? I'm on a personal journey. For me, my children, my self-discovery. And, and what I've learned is and no, <laughs> like, yo, you have to want, you have to want to see yourself succeed. You got to believe in yourself before anybody else really believes in you. Because even amongst coworkers, amongst friends, amongst relatives, amongst whoever, when you're doing what you're doing, it might not be up to their standard. 
But you're not the standard. You're unique. You're you. So anybody looking or judging or have some type of criticism is made to be taken. Yeah, you're supposed to be able to take constructive criticism. But at the same time, you take it with a grain of salt. You take it to make you better or to, to, to either get you deeper into actually what you do. Because a weak-minded person will look at constructive criticism and they'll actually try to change themselves to, to fit the criteria of someone else. I don't want to fit your criteria. I'm uniquely me. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. I don't give a fuck if you, if you, if you hate my artwork, if you don't like my music. I don't give a fuck. I don't. Because I'm uniquely me. And everybody is. And once you realize that, once you, once you have your, you declared your, your, you know, what is it? Individuality. When you declared your individualism, there, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> then you can start really being who you're supposed to be. That's what I'm trying to teach my kids now. Start doing what you want to do in life now. Because they're 11 and 12 right now. And at this moment in time, they're going to school and everything. And they're, they're getting education. But to be honest with you, you and I know that that is just uh, a form of... Uh, What's that? It's educating. It's, it's, it's educating, but it's also a form of just getting you stuck into, you know, a status quo. Like me personally, I'd rather be working on that music, writing, reading, you know, um, dancing, doing things that, that they're actually going to want to do with their life when they get to 20 years old, 21, when they get when they get old enough to actually go out and start really, you know, using their talents and abilities. Because I have special children. These kids are talented at a lot of shit. So I'm guiding them in that way to try to tell them that they can do this. And if I got to take a hit, if I got to suffer through whatever marriage situation, whatever, whatever government situation, whatever municipality situation, whatever life situation I got to suffer through to show them that it's possible to build a legacy and to do more than just go to McDonald's and work or go to SEPTA and work or be a cop or be a construction worker or do some, you know, some, 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 some shit that you really don't want to do with your life. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do what you want to do. You can create something different from what everybody else does. You can see that the world needs something and, 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 and create something to fit that niche. You know? There's always a need for something. You know? And that's what, that's what a lot of us are here to do. We're here to figure out what we're going to do. But we're too busy letting other people tell us what they want us to do or what they want us to be or what they want us to become. What about what you want to do and become? You have plenty of people out there like this. People from all types of walks of life. You know, they got their parents and everything. They, oh, my son's going to be a doctor. He's going to be a lawyer. He's going to be this. He's going to be that. But then that child grows up. He does this. He becomes a doctor, a lawyer, whatever the parents want him to become, you know. Are all of them fulfilled with their life, though? Because I guarantee you that most of them will tell you that this is not what they wanted to do with their life. Most of them have hobbies and things that they may do, you know, from their real passion. What they're really passionate about. And they do that. But they never could invest enough time into their hobbies to let their hobbies become professions. So now they're stuck in a profession that they got to stick with for the rest of their life. And then they forget about their passions. And then their hobbies just become, you know, whatever. Something that grandpa do at the table. Something that grandpa do over there while he's sitting in his rocking chair. Something like that. That could have been the greatest thing that you ever did. You could have gained, you could have became so proficient in that that the world recognize it. But instead, you're somewhere changing a fucking muffler 
or waiting for the next order of fries to be ready. All I can say is follow your dreams. Fuck this system. Fuck the shit that they put in your way. Because they, uh, it's always going to be there. There's always going to be things in your way. There's always going to be something built up to stop you from following your true calling. Because they know they could use you elsewhere. You know, people know they could use you elsewhere. Oh, this guy's a great basketball player or a great this or a great that. But guess what? He don't got to do none of that shit to make his ass great. He can come over here and drive this fucking bus. Or guess what? That nigga good at this. He good at that. He good at fighting. He the best fighter in the world. But guess what? We need these niggas to throw this shit on this trash truck. So even though that nigga can fight and do all that great shit, he ain't got to do none of that. He could just come over here and throw these bags of trash on his truck. That person's funny as shit. Best comedian in the world. Da, 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 da. He, got, he got this. He do that. Very charismatic. He ain't never going to do that, though. Because we going to make him be a meter maid. <laughs> That's how this city do you. Because every day when you, in your life, I see people and I talk to people. I interact with people, right? When I feel like it. And it's like I meet so many different people and it's like I see what they could be. I see the potential in people. I even tell people at times, you should think about doing this because you're great at this. You should think about doing this because you're great at that. And, I, you know, I point these things out. And sometimes the response be like, oh, I can't do that shit. Ah, oh, that shit for somebody else. Nah, I just like, I'm, I'm just chill right here. I'm cool right here. Ah, fuck that. They ain't going to let me do no shit like that. You know they going to hold a nigga down. Da, 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 da. It's always a, a, a level of doubt, a level of uncertainty. Just is not clicking with them. And I'm like, yo, it always was like a thing with me. Like, what you mean nobody's going to let? They, not, they don't want you. Like, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it because you got too used to doing things this way. Plus, at times, you know, some people realize that it's hard to just start out of nowhere and just, you know, it takes time to build up a thing. You know, it takes time to build up a thing. So a lot of people realize that. But if you're doing your job and building it at the same time, there you go. Use the one, you know, two ends of peace both means. You're working, you're doing this until that builds up, you keep doing that. And then once it does, ah. You know, free to go. Home free, as they say. Now, who am I? I don't know much. I'm just an author, musician, trying to do my thing. Spot, Spotify podcaster. Got the YouTube channel and shit like that. I'm trying many hands. I'm putting many irons in the fire as possible. You know, that way. You yeah. know, something... Something's bound to to stick, you know, bound to get a lick. <laughs> but no, man, this is my time. I enjoyed today's session of talking. Really, this is therapeutic for me to get to get on this podcast and talk like this. It's nothing special. I'm not sitting behind no desk or nothing. Sometimes I am. Sometimes when I want to treat myself, I sit in a nice atmosphere and drink a cup of tea and smoke or whatever and, you know, enjoy my podcast session. And even then, it's, it's very therapeutic. But at times, I'll just, you know, find myself in a relaxing moment. And I'll take that time to do a podcast about something that may be on my mind. And then, like, halfway through the podcast, I realize. Like, I'm saying things that I didn't even intend to say on this podcast. And it's because I'm just going with the flow. And the more I do it, the better I get at it. You know, and that's it's building up slowly. This is the second season I'm on. You know, I ended the first season. Um, I started the second season because I ended the first season because I, you know, um, it was a it was a very personal episode on my last episode of the first season. So I just wanted that to sit there and be there. You know what I mean? Um, so I just wanted to start a whole new season, start a whole new slate. And, um, you know, try to do everything in a more um, 
not professional because I'm not a professional. I just try to gain proficiency at whatever I'm doing. So I'm just trying to make, continue to do what I'm doing with a, with another level of proficiency, with a, with a greater level of proficiency. Um, thank you all for listening. Um, check out the books, Nature's Features, uh, Morals and Values, One Leap of Faith on Amazon. Um, I also got uh, heart paperback covers um, available wherever I'm available <laughs> and in some bookstores as well. Um, the music is available for download on all streaming platforms. And also I got new music coming out November 27th. Um, it'll be better than the latest releases. You know, I don't want to say better, but, you know, music is just something, you know, I, I have fun doing it. So Afro Step was just a fun joint that, you know, it is it's a dance hall type joint. And then Late Nights, that's a joint I said, some stuff that was on my mind. That's all it is for me. It's another form of therapy. Music is another form of therapy for me. But um, I came out with two more songs that um, that's going to show my evolution of my artistry. Um, before I made Afro Step and Late Nights, I wasn't making music for a long time. Um, my grandmother transitioned to the next level of life. Um, me dealing with things in my personal life, trying to figure out things. Trying to figure out things and going through things. And also having um, you know, a lot of different stigmas on you and a lot of different things that you worry about in your personal life affects your art. And I'm sure every artist knows this. So I'm um I'm battling my way back to artistry. You know, it's an art to everything that we do in life, but I'm battling my way back to actually being able to create a uh, great art. And I just don't want any outside influences to hinder that for me. Um yeah. I don't want any type of, you know, outside influence hindering that for me so i just by saying that what i'm saying is i just want to stay in a good space a good creative space a good spiritual space mentally spiritually and physically i want to stay in that good space and i also wanted to just say thank you to andre 3000 that fucking album is fire bro i mean listen it's flute music and it's beautiful and he played it to 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 a frequency a healing frequency and we need that we needed that i needed that so personally thank you thank you to andre 3000 for putting out that artwork uh that 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 piece of art i listened to it about five six times i took it i took it to, to where i hang out at and made them listen to it i just turned it on i ain't even say nothing i just told him it's that andre 3000 flute music right here that time when he was in Hawaii and he turned into a panther and he started purring on a low, low resonating vibration sound tones. Yeah, I'm right there with it. <laughs> I right, love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Stay, uh, stay in y'all, stay in your zone. All right. Peace.